it's episode two, five, and seven. of WDW News Tonight. A 100-year-old oak tree fell on the governor's mansion home to Ron DeSantis. Uh, in retaliation, uh, Walt Disney World went to the mansion and chanted, Go Oak, Go Broke! <laughs> <laughs> Tony Burke, seven! Seven? Yeah, seven. I just realized that we've never seen Rob and Father Guido Sarducci in the same room before! <laughs> it had to be the line that the entire episode tonight is based around, which is, uh, put up two, five, and seven. Seven? Seven? Yeah, yeah seven. I'm actually watching this at home. Look at that. Oh, whoa! You can tell he's a Florida driver. <laughs> <laughs> Today with WDW News Today, I'm Tom Corliss of WDWNT.com. Please like this video, subscribe, and hit the notifications bell to make sure you never miss the latest from the Disney theme parks around the world. Here now the news for September 1st, 2023. A new decorative element has appeared at Tiana's Bayou Adventure in the Magic Kingdom, currently under construction, replacing Splash Mountain, of course. And while fresh fake moss has appeared on the mountainside, the barn in the ride's queue has been painted yellow, and now a colorful mural is visible on one side of the barn. The mural is visible from the ground beyond the Walt Disney World Railroad Station. Over the construction walls, we could see the mural on the bottom half of the barn behind scaffolding. The mural features people with diverse skin tones, lines of vibrant colors, plants, and music notes. Of course, this attraction is set to open sometime in late 2024. We were able to visit the Journey of Water inspired by Moana at Epcot during cast member previews. Grand opening time frame for the attraction is not announced as of yet, but at least for the time being, cast previews will be happening for a few weeks. The attraction is a self-guided tour and you can technically spend as much time inside as you want, although cast members are encouraged to move people along as necessary to avoid overcrowding. At the start of the attraction, guests are greeted with a rock structure covered in moss and vines and the Heart of Tefiti symbol carved into the top. Mist rises throughout the attraction, which is interactive to teach people about the water cycle. If you don't want to get wet, don't worry, there is a dry path you can take instead. And if you take the wet path, uh, we promise you will get wet, according to our reporter who uh, visited the attraction. Each sign has basic information as well as conservation starters to help kids learn. A misty rain descends from the rock structures in this section of the walkthrough. And there are signs reminding guests to not drink any of the water in the attraction, which is collected and recirculated. Next, guests can touch strings of water to make musical sounds. Lanterns hang throughout the attraction to keep it lit at night, and there is some shade for hot summer days, though Journey of Water is not completely covered. Of course, the water is there to cool you off. Next in the cycle is the stream. Here, guests can stand on a water drop symbol and wave at the stream to trigger an effect. There are hidden icons and characters on rocks throughout Journey of Water, and here you may be able to spot Maui's fish hook. The wetland section is all about building community. There are a few opportunities to enter the dry path if you change your mind after getting a taste of Journey of Water all along the way. As guests move under some decorative shades, they arrive at a spring. Unfortunately, the water is not feeling playful or responsive in this area when we visited. Uh, of course, uh, you know, there's, it's expected that not everything will work every day as testing continues. And as we continued, we noticed a character in the rocks, Pua. Moving from the spring, we learn about how the land is shaped by water. Here, guests pass through cavernous structures. If you move slowly, a waterfall might open for you. Just don't run because then you're getting soaked. In this rock wall, we found the sail of Moana's boat, and there are restrooms off a path in the middle of the attraction. Guests then approach a small lake with a large figure of Tefiti leaning over it. Tefiti is the uh, nature goddess made up of vines, leaves, and flowers, and a waterfall pours into the lake. Tefiti sits on a moss-covered rock also wrapped in vines and flowers with small waterfalls in front of her. There are signs with information about how to protect water, source, uh, water resources. And after Tefiti, the lake, uh, and the lake is a river. Here, there are jumping fountains crossing over a thin river that runs next to the path. We also found a baby Moana rock, uh, along with Tamatoa as well. There's a shaded area with jumping water to walk through in case you aren't wet enough by now. The area also has the Kakamora carvings. 
And before the biggest interactive water features are, are reminders about various rules. But now it's time to enter the ocean. Here, guests need to jump on the water drop symbols to send water back to the sky to complete the water cycle. More jumping fountains send water into the air. And as we circle back to the front of the attraction, water fills the air again. Um, by the time this is out, you should be able to watch a video walkthrough of the journey of water inspired by Moana. Uh, also, next week, I will have an honest review for you of my thoughts on the experience, so stay tuned for that. The Cake Bake Shop by Gwendolyn Rogers will not open at Disney's Boardwalk this year, as Disney originally announced in August of 2022. Cake Bake Shop is taking over the former ESPN Club space and remains in the midst of construction. The 2023 opening time frame has been removed from the official Cake Bake Shop website, and a new time frame was not announced. The shop is just now coming soon. The Cake Bake Shop will include a table service restaurant and a quick service style bakery. Uh, the restaurant will offer breakfast, brunch, lunch, afternoon tea, uh, dinner, desserts, and cocktails in an exquisite atmosphere filled with magic and wonder while you take in views of Crescent Lake. For the first time ever, extended evening hours will be offered at Disney's Animal Kingdom in November. This update was shared via the Walt Disney World monthly operating calendar, which shows extended evening hours being offered at Animal Kingdom on November 8th. The calendar only shows through November 8th, so it's possible more dates could be added when it's updated, but for now, that's just the start of it. This program is brought to you by our official travel agent sponsor, Be Our Guest Vacations, which is a great way to book a resort so you get those extended evening hours and as well early access to the parks. Your dream vacation begins with Be Our Guest and their concierge team of expert vacation planners. Head on over to BeOurGuestVacations.com slash WDWNT and their team will design your next magical vacation. From the Walt Disney World and Disneyland Resorts to the Disney Cruise Line to Adventures by Disney and more. They're also able to book unforgettable VIP tours where you and your group can experience the ultimate park day. And the best part is their concierge services are 100% free, so book today. The grounds of the Haunted Mansion will experience their own spirited metamorphosis at Disneyland in 2024. These additions to the grounds will build on the story and lore of the classic attraction. will also include an expanded outdoor queue with enhanced theming. A new retail shop adjacent to the exit of the Haunted Mansion will also be added. The official announcement references a local legend that suggests the manor as we know it today was originally built by a prosperous sea captain, and to this day, the mansion staff faithfully maintains the happy haunting grounds. The expanded queue will tie these stories into the overall lore of the mansion, as well as include other new additions like gardens inspired by Master Gracie, Madame Leota, and of course, the one-eyed cat. Each of these new gardens will include their own unique elements from a water fountain and gazebo to themed statuary and landscaping. Leota's garden will include items related to her various incantations uttered on the ride itself. And guests will also be able to see a new greenhouse where the groundskeepers for the Haunted Mansion grow their plants. But if you're concerned about the pet cemetery and the horse-drawn funeral hearse, don't worry. Both will continue to reside in their rightful place on the attraction's grounds. As for the new retail space, it'll be themed as a carriage house for the mansion with a shop belonging to Madame Leota. More details will be shared about the new space at a later date. Disneyland also shared that enhancements will be made to the plaza adjacent to Tiana's Palace, transforming it into a new elegant park-like setting, where guests can relax and enjoy the ambiance and live entertainment while shaded by new and historic trees. Construction on the Haunted Mansion grounds expansion and the enhancements to New Orleans Square are scheduled to begin in January of next year. During this time, a new elevator exit will be added to the Haunted Mansion for guests with disabilities in order to help improve accessibility. This is, you know, the, the difference between Walt Disney World and every other Disney resort is generally care. This project shows a, a lot of care, and it also shows that Disneyland pays attention to, pays attention to operational problems, right? Um, French Market and, and the Mint Julep Bar always overwhelmed always needed more seating. And so it was surprising to see the Tiana's Palace project take place. Because again, what is this gonna do for you? You don't have enough seating as it is for the popularity of the restaurant. Adding an IP, something that people know and the desire, more desire for people to eat there is only gonna overwhelm the, the seating situation more, right? So I wondered, looking at it, I was like, why don't they expand the seating into the, the adjacent uh, plaza? There is that sort of garden area with the fountain um, next door between Haunted Mansion and Tiana's Palace and the, and the train station. And of course, someone, someone at Imagineering, someone in management at, at Disneyland Resort realized that this, you know, I, I don't understand fully why they're not doing it, why they didn't do it before Tiana's Palace or at the same time. 
that strikes me as weird, but I'm glad nonetheless um, that it's being done. The other thing that strikes me is this, this Q expansion at Mansion, um, I think to me screams uh, ADA and it also screams Lightning Lane. Um, if you've been there, the other, another operational thing you'll notice that's a problem at Disneyland um, is the Lightning Lane of Haunted Mansion. It usually spills around the corner. It's kind of a mess. It blocks a bit of the standby queue. So moving it down there, again, it doesn't say this. My assumption is Lightning Lane and, and, and uh, you know, um, uh, you know uh, disability will move to this, this new expanded queue area um, and, and, and sort of separate it from the main queue. Um, that's my theory. I, I like everything I see about it. That's great. The sea captain um, allure being expanded. Of course, the original you know, idea for the mansion was it was a sea captain's manor. Um, that's great. The one-eyed cat lore being expanded. All these thoughtful things. Building a real merchandise store where that just that kind of cart and stand has been, which it's the right time to do it right with Tiana construction because that butted up against the Splash Mountain entrance uh, and, and, ex and expanded extended queue, I should say. Um, so this is all, I love the fact that they're doing, you know, feel how you want about Tiana's Bayou Adventure, but the fact that the love is spilling all the way down that pathway that they're using this as an opportunity, right? While we're doing this uh, construction work on Splash, what can we do next door? What can we do down the way? And really refresh this whole area. And this is just a couple months after they did um, the new seating area at Harbor Galley. Um, uh, the, 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 uh, what is it? Pelican's Landing. I forget the name of it, but you know what I'm talking about. Um, this is, this is great. Kudos to Disneyland and Imagineering. Um, this is, this is what needs to be done. And it's all seems very thoughtful and caring and should be, uh, enjoyed by guests. Magic key holders will be able to collect four new Haunted Mansion trading cards featuring iconic characters from the ride and the cast members who brought them to life. Four cards will be available to Magic Key holders at Disneyland Resort in September. On one side of each card is a holographic image that changes from the character's face and name to the cast members. The Disneyland Magic Key Instagram page shared a video of the Madame Leota card changing to Eleanor Audley, who voiced Madame Leota. The cards will be available during regular operating hours at Disney Anna and Disneyland Park from September 4th through September 28th, Mondays through Thursdays only. The art of Br'er Fox, Br'er Bear, and Br'er Rabbit in the Briar Patch gift shop over by Tiana's Bayou Adventure, formerly Splash Mountain, of course was replaced earlier this week with art depicting generic forest creatures. That artwork is so generic, in fact, that anyone could purchase these three pieces on blackforestdecor.com. Again, no offense to the designer is intended here. It's generic in the sense that it replaces unique custom artwork designed specifically for the attraction. This is now just replaced with stuff ordered off the internet. Of course, uh, you're looking now at how Br'er Rabbit, Br'er Fox, and Br'er Bear's art looked in the attraction, but now you'll find a Wise Owl Wood Wall art piece. That's what it's called on the website. You can buy that for $139.95. Uh, the Br'er Bear art that once hung over the doorway has been replaced with a generic art of a bear on a log, and it's actually called Bear on Branch Carved Wood Wall Art. That one's $209.95. Uh, and then there's the Br'er Fox art, uh, which was replaced uh, with Sleepy Bear Carved Wood Wall Art, uh, that's $269.95. Um, there are Disney hotel rooms that per night cost more than they spent on three pieces of art for this store. So I assume with Tiana's Bayou Adventure, this store is going to change. Um, I would have just removed the art for now if it was bothering people and just left it blank until you have what's going to go there. If this is the permanent solution, then th this company is steeped in an incredible legacy of original art. And the fact is that whether you, you, you didn't want to draw up new Tiana art, you didn't think about it, whatever the case may be, to replace original art, beloved art, with stuff ordered off the internet that's fairly inexpensive, is, is it breaks away from what Disney is supposed to be. So it's all about the details and the care put into those details. That's what... Uh, at its core made the Disney theme parks different from amusement parks and fairs. That's what made them different. And once you start ordering things from a catalog, like again, propping in general, there's plenty of things that are, you could buy on the internet or you find at a yard or whatever, that makes sense. But replacing original art, stuff that was created specifically for an attraction that can't be found anywhere else, replacing it with stuff that can be found very easily online is, is sad. 
it's sad. I, I hope this is not the finished product. I hope this will be changed. The Mint Julep Bar at Disneyland has reopened after an over six month closure. Bar was closed while the attached French market becomes Tiana's Palace. The Mint Julep Bar remains relatively unchanged, although it has been repainted with new lanterns hanging over it. The Mint Julep Bar is around the back of Tiana's Palace near the Disneyland Railroad Station. Construction walls stop right next to the bar's queue. Outdoor seating may be available again after Tiana's Palace reopens. Uh, yellow and green awning hangs over the area. The walls of the outdoor bar have been painted a muted orange and the podiums and window frames are green. The Mint Julep Bar serves mint juleps, of course, as well as coffee, tea, cocoa, and sodas. They also have Mickey-shaped beignets in packs of three or six, and there's mobile order available. The mounted sign and painted sign feature green and red details. And the new lanterns are black iron with green translucent glass panels. The panels are decorated with black leaves on curling stems. Uh, it's like what you might see in a bayou, of course, which will better fit the adjacent Tiana's Palace, which will have its grand opening on September 7th. We are expecting it to soft open before that date, though, so stay tuned for more on that. Pacific Wharf has now completed its transformation into the Big Hero 6-inspired San Francisco Square. In fact, Thursday was the grand opening day of the area. The Hamada Bot Shop, where the Big Hero 6 team builds and innovates their gear, is a dedicated meet-and-greet location for both Hero and Baymax. The characters stand beneath an awning in front of a garage door adorned with a vibrant painting of a scenic valley. Unlike previous Baymax meet and greets, he is now fully interactive. He walks, but also talks, blinks, and makes a few machine sounds. In the morning, Baymax and Hero were rotating appearances. Hero appeared in his classic red shirt, hoodie, and cargo shorts. Baymax and Hero later came out together. We don't know if Baymax and Hero will continue to meet separately or together, or what times of day that might be, uh, but it's worth checking repeatedly through the day to find out. We'll keep you in the loop as we find out, but as of today, we don't really know. You can watch the video of us meeting Hero and Baymax and talking to Baymax, in fact, right here on our channel. Meanwhile, the San Francisco Maker's Market gift shop also opened. Outside the Maker's Market are banners featuring different bots with red X's across them. The only bot without the red X is Hero's Megabot, the reigning champion. There are signs for the Maker's Market uh, in both English and Japanese, just like other signage in the land. And inside, merchandise is displayed in large open toolboxes, each representing a different bot and their maker. This one says property of Mr. Yama. In Big Hero 6, Megabot defeats Yama's robot, Little Yama. The next box is for Snip's House of Razors, featuring splotches of pink paint uh, and skulls. And Snip's is a bot defeated by Little Yama in Big Hero 6. The bots themselves sit amongst wires atop the merchandise displays. Wormbot and its owner, Trina, appeared in Big Hero 6, the series. And a box for Sawbot, which also appeared in the series, with several warnings on it, uh, is closed and next to the register. The register is housed in a crate stamp, the San Francisco, San Francisco Institute of Technology logo on it. The box for Cerberus Bot features green lettering and radioactive symbols. Beware of Dog is on the side, and Cerberus also appeared in the Big Hero 6 animated series. Rolling merchandise displays full of Baymax plush are also stamped with the Institute of Technology logo in yellow. And if you look up, you might spot a hidden Baymax between two of the overhead lights. As far as merchandise and location, there wasn't a whole lot new. A lot of it we've seen before. There's a couple of new pieces, but nothing is necessarily labeled San Francisco Square. Maybe that'll happen down the line. We don't know, but the merchandise selection, um, not particularly huge and not particularly exclusive to the land as of yet. Meanwhile, Baymax bread can be found in San Francisco Square. It's $11.99. It's shaped like Baymax, complete with his fluffy stomach and black eyes made of chocolate chips. This, of course, is your standard Bodine sourdough that you can get as a loaf, a roll, a baguette, a bread bowl, or Mickey-shaped bread throughout DCA. Meanwhile, an updated version of the Baymax Sipper has arrived. The Baymax Sipper is $19.79. Like most sippers, Baymax includes your choice of fountain beverage. It's limited to two per person, per transaction, and no discounts apply. A red straw sticks out of Baymax's back. The previous Baymax Sipper had a plain white base, as pictured uh, right now in 2015 at Hollywood Studios. The new Sipper has Baymax standing on his charging dock. The Baymax Sipper includes a red strap featuring Baymax, the quote, hello, I am Baymax, and the Disney Parks logo. The Baymax Sipper is available at the following locations, the Lucky Fortune Cookery, Cocina Cucamonga, uh, Ant Cass Cafe, and the Bodine Bread Cart. As well, the Ant Cass Cafe opened to guests this week. We have a full review of every single item at that new location available on the channel. Megan and Allie uh, did a great job. Megan's first time out. Welcome her to the team. Uh, go check out that review and everything you should try at Ant Cass. And, of course, if you're heading out there, uh, Eric and I went out and reviewed all the other new food 
uh, last month, be sure you check out that video review as well, right here on the channel. As Pacific Wharf became San Francisco Square on Thursday, some other remnants of the old area have officially taken on a new designation in the Disneyland Resort app, permanently retiring the Pacific Wharf name in its entirety. The entire Golden Vine Winery Complex, including Wine Country Trattoria, the Mendocino Terrace, Sonoma Terrace, and Magic Key Terrace are no longer part of Pacific Wharf on the map, now being referred to as part of the Performance Corridor Area. This alludes to the fact that the pathway this space rests beside has been historically and consistently used for parades and entertainment. Even the restrooms have undergone this redesignation. Meanwhile, changes have already occurred in the uh, primary former Pacific Wharf area, where the venues such as Ghirardelli, Soda Fountain, and Chocolate Shop are now listed as part of San Francisco Square. Um, so this is it. So officially, um, I think officially now, all remnants of Golden State, which was an opening day land at DCA, are now gone. That's, that's no longer a thing. It was weird. So when Golden State died, they moved the winery and stuff as part of Pacific Wharf, even though it's not really there. Um, I will say I'm not crazy about the idea of a land being called Performance Corridor. It's probably the worst land name in all of the Disney parks on Earth. Um, so hopefully they come up with something that's a special designation here because Performance Corridor doesn't sound very Disney. Disney has shared a new look at the mural inspired by scenes from Walt Disney Animation Studios films that will be on display when the Villas at Disneyland Hotel opens on September 28th. From the moment guests enter the new 12-story tower, they'll be greeted by this new mural created by the Disney Vacation Club property, uh, created for the Disney Vacation Club property by Lorelei Beauvais, uh, associate producer and uh, associate production designer on Encanto, excuse me. From left to right, the mural includes characters and, and moments from the following animated films. Peter Pan, Sleeping Beauty, Alice in Wonderland, Fantasia, Moana, The Jungle Book, The Lion King, Aladdin, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, Mulan, Big Hero 6, Encanto, The Princess and the Frog, the upcoming film Wish, Frozen, Raya and the Last Dragon, and Bambi. There are also several hidden Mickeys scattered throughout the mural for guests to find. Of course, we will be there. Jason's going. I'm going to be at Disneyland Paris. But Jason uh, and gang are going to be heading out there at the end of the month. Uh, to bring you coverage, we are we're going to have a room tour and much more for you from the opening of the villas at the Disneyland Hotel. So stay tuned for that. As a result of the Hurricane Adalia uh, that was in the area this week, Disney Parks announced the upcoming grand reveal of the Disney Treasure cruise ship has been rescheduled. Disney Parks shared the announcement on their official Twitter account, saying the grand reveal uh, has been moved again due to the hurricane that was in the area on that day. Um, it was originally supposed to take place on August 30th. Now, uh, the virtual event will be held on September 5th at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Of course, uh, if you want to find out what's happening, be sure to watch that live. We're going to have a breakdown of all those announcements right here on the channel next week. Myself and British from Be Our Guest Vacations. Uh, just after that presentation is over, we're going to talk about all those venues uh, and, and get you guys excited for the Disney treasure. I know I am. I am excited for unofficially... A haunted mansion bar, unofficially a Coco, uh, you know, dinner show, unofficially another Worlds of Marvel with a different show, and more. But uh, sorry to ruin some of those surprises for you. But nonetheless, there will be some surprises. There's some things we don't know, and we'll find them out uh, on the fifth. For the first time in well ever. We got a glimpse of the completed signage in the world of Frozen at Hong Kong Disneyland, slated to open in November of 2023. Hong Kong Main Street Gazette shared this peek on their Instagram page. The gilded world of Frozen sign stands complete and ready to welcome guests to the Frozen Wonders Beyond. Lights above the sign will illuminate the golden recessed lettering and Nordic filigree inspired framing when the land opens. We still don't know the date, we just know November. For those hoping to add more Halloween spirit to their decorative popcorn bucket collection, a brand new design featuring ghost Mickey Mouse attached to a jack-o'-lantern has debuted at Tokyo Disneyland. As previously reported, this souvenir bucket is also being sold at the American Waterfront in Tokyo Disney Sea as of today. This new item is available at the popcorn cart by the gazebo right around the boundary between the park's central hub and Adventureland. The Mickey Ghost popcorn bucket is 3,200 yen, about $22 US. And the bucket itself is bright orange with a smiling pumpkin face at the centerpiece. And the ghostly Mickey Mouse with an ear headband rests on the top and the lid also opens from this area. 
Have a happy Halloween is written across the lanyard strap connected to the bucket with spider webs and pumpkins comprising the artwork. Purple clips connect the strap to the bucket. Three AAA batteries power the popcorn bucket's light up functionality. Very, very cute. And of course, I had Nana pick me up one. I needed it. For the absolute latest on these stories and all that didn't make it into today's show, be sure to check WWNT.com and follow us on all your favorite social media platforms. You can support the entire team behind this show and others by joining the WDWNT Inner Globe Society at patreon.com slash WDWNT. Get access to exclusive content, discounted show and event tickets, and more. Special shout out to all of our WIGS members watching who make the show happen every week. Also, if you're wondering why there's a test track costume behind me, that's because we celebrated the 257th episode of WDW News tonight this week. That is a strange number, but if you remember old test track, there was a particular line of the ride that we loved. Um, regarding that number seven, and that's why we celebrated. Uh, we also happen to celebrate 25 years of Test Track this year at Epcot. So make sure you tune in for that special episode. It's now available on demand on the WWNT TV channel. Go watch it. For the worldwide leader in Disney Parks news, this is Tom Corliss saying, enjoy the rest of your today. Have a great, big, beautiful tomorrow.